Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here. So today we're going to continue, or actually not continue anything, we're going to start a new campaign in Old World Blues. Probably the last campaign I'll start in Old World Blues for the next few weeks. But uh, anyways, let's go into single player. And I'm going to choose, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, as well as the image, maybe, uh, the chickens. I decided to choose the chickens this time because... I don't want to fight into their lands again, so I might as well play as them and don't have to, don't have to really worry about the waterways between here, and it'll be interesting to see as we play Calomente Sebastian II, and obviously custom game rules just to follow everything, so, and regular, I usually don't go to veteran or elite, so, because I'm not that great, not that great at Hoi4, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay at Hoi4, but anyways, Let's play as some of the chickity chickadees and have a great time. So I tried this a little bit earlier. I uh, didn't get too far in, but regardless, we must start at the top with oil and imperialism. Many years ago, during the height of the resource wars, the Americans invaded Mexico to, to secure its rapid, depleted sources of oil. Their invasion and occupation left a lasting scar upon the land in more ways than Uno. Cool. So, um, if you don't know about the chicken itza, really the chichen itza, we are tribal. So, those of you who want to play, like, Broken Coast up north, right now, this game will be similar, except we're in Mexico instead of Broken Coast. And I can't really raid things. But anyways, I want to get some research speed. I do want to start the first thing of land doctrines, and we're going to keep asymmetrical warfare for now. Maybe in the future we might change it, but I want to at least get the first one going, and then... Uh... Ooh, let's get more fax, max factories and output. Yeah, that would probably be very good. Right now, we can't really do very much, so this is all we got is Division de Wac. Um, We're going to duplicate that. And I'm going to call these regs, because I will need some regular divisions eventually. Go ahead and train, like, four divisions of that. Um, We have some Division del Ejercito, which are okay, but whatever. Can't really do very much about that. We'll train one of you guys as well, because you will be the Coast Guard. We need to produce some more civilian factories. Pretty normal stuff in the beginning of any Hoi 4 game. Uh, yeah, yeah, looks pretty good. Cool. Some dockyards. We need definitely work on guns quite a bit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to use that stuff. That looks okay. For now, I'm not really going to use, be using support equipment that much. Make some support equipment, but we'll do that. Pioneer stuff will go down to two. That'll be good. And dockyards, or, you know, yeah, dockyard build ships. These destroyers suck. Oh, this is a heavy ship? Ooh, don't mind if I do. Go into Cancun Ka. So that's a, oh, destroyer longboat. This looks like a, not a very good ship. Compared to this, though, this is definitely better. So, I don't want to get rid of a lot of these just because I can upgrade these in the future, but... Um, I wish there was a way to separate this stuff, but whatever. Uh, I have four light ships. Two, oh, four different types of destroyers. Jesus. So you guys have that stuff on there. You guys have that stuff. Actually, yeah. Name, theme, medium. Destroyers. So there's destroyers. I'm just taking a quick look on the left here. Well, it's, uh, clutter ship, riverboat. Mm, this is definitely better than this, right? 1.2, yeah. Definitely do this one next. And go to Cancun as well. Awesome. Uh, unassigned divisions, obviously, we actually are going to be using some sp specialized units, some spec ops units here. And I already played this a little bit earlier, so I kind of already know. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Give me 18 divisions. You'll see why I need 18 of these guys. Ah, uh, you know what said? Give me three more back. Cool. And you will be the main guy, Nakom Manuel Lozada. And we're going to make sure we take out this country as fast as possible first. You guys are spec ops. You guys are coast guards. So I can put you with the drug addict. Yeah. He's a drug addict. Bless his heart. He's a, he is but a druggie. But let's get time going at least a little bit. Let's guard the waterways. Those are very important down in Mexico here. That nice, very good. Uh, that's most of our country guarded. Now we have 14. We are using 15, but you'll see why soon enough when we take these guys over. So, um, all right. So I'm gonna take out 
this nation down here as fast as possible because I don't want them thinking about doing anything else. Spec Ops Divisions will be very good. Um, give him to Hunan Alma Arista. Yes. Very good. And, like I said, we're going to begin thinking about taking the, this enemy down here. That's five, six, seven, eight. Eight for down here. Come over here. One, one, two, three. Give me you guys, like, right there. Very nice. I'm about to sneeze. Hopefully I won't, but maybe I will. Um, give me you, and then one, two, three. Come over here. Do that. Uh, give me one, two, three, four over here. Okay. Um, one, two. Oh, I have left all I have left is two for this side. Then that's okay. Cool. So I really want to take these guys out down in the south. Tuxla something. Red, white, and blue though. The Americans were once our ally. Then they became our rival. Then our enemy. In 2051, the American army invaded Mexico with the intent of securing our oil and protecting their businesses. Whilst the Mexican forces put up a stiff resistance, they were ultimately dashed by the superior quality and quantity of the American troops. The American troops were then free to occupy the entirety of Mexico. When the American troops came down to the Yucatan Peninsula, our militias initially resisted, but the American came with an overwhelming force. Ah, America. The result, well, red was the blood of the martyrs. We get more defense and entrenchment speed. Blue was the water we flat into, which we lose prep time, as well as division attack, which I don't want at all. We get faster naval speed and amphibious invasion speed. Or white was flag, white was flag we flew in desperation. Uh, surrender limits really isn't a debuff. I don't mind getting more speed and a little bit more population, because weekly we are losing 10 guys. That's not good. We need to get rid of the flower words as fast as possible, but through reviving an ancient culture. With the eradication or desertion of the American military, a void has been left in society. As a result, we've turned to the ways of old to try and fill this gap. Now, um, explaining this country, Chichen Itza or Chickens, it's kind of like Tlaloc, my last campaign, where eventually you're going to have to make a decision in which either you stay with the normal guy, you go with the guy on the left, or actually the Clara on the left, or you go eventually go with total mobilization with Carlos Franco. Um, I have a pretty good idea which way I'm going to go, but anyways, the ways of old while nuclear hellfire, the subsequent collapse of civilization stripped, and the following decades of blundering ignorance stripped the new world of most of its knowledge of old. <clears throat> Some scraps of old world values have been clung to. These values often conveyed through folk stories have become... <clears throat> important to the growing middle and upper class groups in the empire who seek any link to the old world they can. Two popular stories are passed around most, and with our help, one could become paramount in our society, which should be a story about the sanctity of family, the tale of the infallibility of a ruler. Well, honestly, political power is nice right now, but I played this a little bit earlier, and it doesn't do very much for me. That's okay, it's not bad, I like it, but I'd rather have the civilian workshop and a little bit more water so that I can use that civilian workshop to continue to build more, 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 more stuff. Also, I forgot, and I've neglected my navy. Give me that. Combine them all. One big old fleet. Oh, ruling the waves of fleet. Long a part of Itzen history. The great Gulf fleet of the Itzen Empire can field in times of war as something of a legend. Drawn upon the merchant boats as well as regular military craft, our fleet rules the western gulf pretty much supreme. Opinions divide, however, about how we should best employ this unique advantage. One young admiral, however, about how we should best employ this unique advantage. One, um, Camilla argues that we should focus our naval prowess on contesting the rivers of Mexico. Um, Mateo, meanwhile, is a firm believer in the wide patrol formations, helping protect trade and enhance our reputation. Finally, the elder Luis backs a force in being approach, supporting the use of large ships to protect our superiority far and wide. Which blend does the Col Colomte favor the most? Colomte. Um, I'm going to go with what sounds like the best. Luis's plan, just because it says capital ship, and I like capital ships. And also, I know I didn't read this, so uh, come at the hour, come at the man. Uh, the day was dark. The Aztecs were on the advance, and the bulk of Ejercito were broken in the retreat from the Aztec forces. However, a young and charismatic general emerged and rallied the few troops he could into battle once more. Through a combination of surprise, brilliant tactical decisions, and sheer desperation, the Ejercito troops shattered the Aztec vanguard. I love water. I almost said coffee. But I have coffee here too, so if you're interested, I am going to drink some coffee for everyone here. Um, you guys, you're going to meet up. And here we go. A Calomte rises. On the 12th of March, 2232, the Calomte Sebastian II. 
first made his name. There on the banks of the Papaloapan River, the young Sebastian rallied the last remnants of the Itzen army to him, holding up wave after wave of Atzlan infantry. The Itzen force, barely a fraction of what the Atzlan horde that day forced the Atzlan to a bloody stalemate and following the collapse of the Atzlan northern excursion into Tlaloc's lands ultimately forces an Atzlan retreat. It was on that day that Colomte became revered amongst the Ejercito and amongst the people, but not not but a few years later, though, Sebastian seized power and almost bloodlessly in a coup. With the support of almost the entire armed forces, he proclaimed himself Colomte, or Kings of Kings. All who met him agreed that he had one quantity that made him a great key. king, but what was it? A cult of personality? That sounds like fun. War industrial sounds like fun. It's charisma. Um, if I'm going to build stuff, I'm probably going to be building a lot of military factories. Mobilization speed's okay. Ideology, drift defense is okay. Let's go with keen focus on supply left a lasting impression. And next up is what we're going to do is Calumte's adventures to get the two fronts. Under Calumte Sebastian, the Itzen Empire has drastically expanded in size, and most of the campaigns under Calumte's leadership, the Calumte has led the Itzen forces himself. He has no intention of giving up this up. Interesting. Uh, and we do definitely want to do southward expansion in due time. Very good. Also, how are these ships? They're still... Oh, there you go. Awesome. So, half of you guys, halve yourselves. Take you. Half yourself. And that's... How many ships is that? That's seven screens. That's not quite enough. But that's good enough for me right now. I don't really care. Nice. So, we got four fleets. Not bad. Go ahead and train. And we're going to make sure we get this guy who has capital ship attack. As well as capital ship armor. Because that's all I care about somehow, some way. Uh, this doesn't really hurt our energy cell usage too much because the Navy currently uses 31 at a maximum a day. So the two fronts, following his victory on the banks of the Papa Papalopan River, Sebastian became a popular hero. The Ejercito followed him devotedly and the militias bowed before his might. Three years after his victory against Aslan in 2242, Sebastian seized power in a coup d'etat. The takeover was executed without so much as a whisper from society. Sebastian was crowned Colomte, King of Kings by the priests of the temples. After taking power, Sebastian set about destroying army corruption and, most importantly, recovering territory lost to Itza in the last 40 years. His campaigns rolled back, the Atlan Empire expelled southern raiders into the deepest jungles along the, alongside the militias in Honduras and destroyed the northern tribes. Now, in the year 2275, Colomte is about to embark on new expeditions, but where should he be, or where should he be prioritized? Securing the west is critical. The threats to the north are of the most grave. X M. Uh, well then, where is that? XM. Uh, there you are. Oh, you're. Oh, it's over here against Petro Chico. Um, that's okay. That's actually not too bad. Hela Uchpen Tsoun. right here. Infrastructure. That that could be good for more infrastructure. We get a little bit more resources, but I get another arms workshop, and I could really use that. So, next up, we're gonna do southward expansion with. I can't read that description. I It might be invisible. I can't really see it. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I can't exactly read that, but that's okay. Also, yeah, we gave this guy the drug stuff. I'm really trying to make sure we get enough infantry equipment because we need a ton of it. So much infantry equipment will be needed. Uh, for now, go ahead and lower that by that much because I need as much infantry equipment as humanly possible. Um, but dum bum bum, and I can't. Oh, I guess I can change these to regular divisions. That'd be fine for now. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, I and mean, they're definitely not these other divisions. These other like twelve combat with infantry divisions. Nice, and they actually have recon. That's really good. Because these that I just converted have only four combat with, and all they have is just four battalions of infantry, which isn't very good for anyone. Also, I do need to go to uh, begin a scavenging program eventually, so that'll be important. And that's why I need 50 pipe guns stored in stockpile, because that takes a couple days to do this. Offer sacrifice to Hun Nal Ye. Well, right now, our priest prediction next year in the days of Ka'an will be good. The Itzen Empire is vast. We govern over close to a million people, small by pre-war standards, but huge in this post-apocalyptic world. As a result, our farmers must toil hard in their fields to feed the cities and the armies. If there's too few of them, or if Mother Nature just so wishes, we may face a devastating famine and even a severe civil unrest. The success of our day of Ka'an depends on how expansive our world draft exceptions are, as well as the year's day of Ka'an predictions coming from our priests and ultimately on the maize or maize goddess Hunnal Yi herself. Cool. And then we'll do cultural ties with Tzotzil. In the early days of the fallout, when our nation was just getting to its feet, 
a small group of the early Itzen citizens, dissatisfied with the first Kolumpte split from our nation. They traveled south through the jungle, eventually establishing themselves in deep in the jungle, forging Tierra de la Tzotzil in the process. As a result, they share many cultural links with Tzotzil, which are practically begging to be exploited. I love exploiting people! Wait. Uh, yeah. You shouldn't have said that so loudly. Eh, regardless, uh, the reason I want to go to war with these guys as fast as possible because if you give them more than enough time, they're going to have a lot more divisions. And actually, right now, I feel like I'm... Eh, they have some divisions. They don't have a ton. Which is good. Ohm's Law, very nice. Definitely do work as needed. That'd be good. Well, actually, you should work more than work as needed, but whatever. You should work as much as possible right now. Hmm, she's fire on the border. For many decades, border clashes have raged between ourselves and Nueva Atlan. The qu clashes revolve around three main stages, Mexico City, Hela Uchben Tsaun, and La Tumba Compartida. Owning these states gives us important stability bonuses and also gives our enemy important debuffs. The border is contested every three or four months with initiative flipping backwards and forwards between ourselves and Nueva Atlan. If we fail to ignite a border war, as our hardliners demand, we will face harsh consequences. So, Day of Khan. Man, ooh, lots of reading makes me thirsty. Ah, coffee's pretty good. Hmm, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Cultural ties with Sotzil. I want to take these guys out as fast as possible before they can recruit too many divisions, because they are recruiting more and more divisions, and I don't want to have too much of a struggle in the beginning, but we'll do a challenge for leadership. After years of careful political marriages and clever resource investments, we have managed to elevate a loyalist to a senior position in Tzotzil. All he needs to do now is successfully challenge Tzotzil's leader to a duel, and Tzotzil will be a loyal puppet. Cool. Um, so that's why I'm really keen on breaking into their lands as fast as possible, because of the waterways. Um, I think eventually we can get Honduras as a puppet, and that'll be pretty cool. Commandant Luis. Very nice. Mercenary city. Powerful. Ah, I love a national spirit called Powerful. So yeah, like I said earlier, this is probably going to be the last campaign, or maybe not the last campaign, but really it's not. After I after this entire campaign here with uh, the chickens, I'm going to go back to a different mod. I kind of already have an idea of who I'm going to play as. So just because we can break it up a little bit, because like someone said, my last five campaigns or so were all in new Old World Blues, which is a great, great mod, but... Even I'm getting, to a degree, a little bit tired of Old World Blues at the current moment, and I've kind of forgotten. Well, maybe I haven't forgotten, but I'm not as geared up on Vanilla Hoi 4 or its other mods at the current moment. But right now, actually, we want to go to Political Advisor. We want to do... Mm, oh, Tehun Clara Guzman. So we get more daily political power, we get more consumer goods. We might lose a little bit of factory output, but we get more daily intellectual support, which I really want to do. I think I'm going to go with the intellectuals here in Chichen. Obviously, we don't, we don't get that much more support every day. It's 0 0.02, which is a little bit, tiny amount. Because with our focus tree, eventually, if we choose Claire Guzman, the, the advisor I just chose, we can do industrial modernization. And then if we do that, we can eventually get to or become a civilized nation. I think that'd be great. And we also get another research slot, so that's really good. Ray survives another day. Earlier today, at our instruction, Maximo Vela challenged Tierra de los Tzotzil's ruler, Tobias Ray, to a duel for leadership. These duels are traditional to decide on the leadership of Tzotzil and are seen as an honorable way to settle disputes, but have rarely been used over the past decades due to Ray's fearsome reputation inside the arena. However, at the prompting of the Columte himself, Vela has decided to try for the title in the arena. Despite his best efforts, Vela was unable to break Ray's careful defense, and ultimately, a well planned thrust from Ray knocked Vela to the floor. Oh boy. Unfortunately, this completely sinks our plans to peacefully annex Tzotzil, but we do have other methods at our disposal. Hmm. Alright, cool. And then next, we shall go with support the southern front. I don't want to do this yet because we, I need to keep as many guns with me as possible. So we're going to expand the factories. Uh, the factories are our lifeblood. From, the, from them flow guns, explosives, and ammo, all of which are required in abundance to defend our borders and continue the conquest. And yes, I have not forgotten about dynamite yet, but I only, only have three research slots, and I gotta do inf industry stuff first. Man, I cannot speak today whatsoever. Anyways, uh, let our guys go in as hard as possible. Hard as possible, and thrust. And thrust. There we go. So really, these are just kind of place markers here for me right now. Just let the infantry just go in wildly. Uh, I don't mind them going like almost extremely wildly just because I want to get this done as fast as possible. We do get some daily army XP from the Flower Wars, which is okay, so 
the more XP we can get, the better. Just go for the capital, if you can. Nice, we already landed here. Six army XP, construction basics, very nice. Uh, I want even more construction, because we need to build up, up as fast as humanly possible. So the front is slowly going well. We've lost no guys yet. They're almost ready to capitulate. They've lost 25 guys. Um, you guys move up, maybe. You guys can probably go that way, help them push out. Look at that, we already have 10, 11 army XP. Let's see, cease a fire on the border, flower war has been seized due to war, diplomacy or other events. Yeah, no one's gonna really win that probably, so I'm not really worried about that. There we go, see, easy peasy. Go ahead, I'm not gonna take all states, I will do that eventually, but go ahead and puppet them because we need that for a focus. Thank you very much for playing, guys. Now we can actually focus on, oh, don't do that. I'll actually have the spec ops come over here. Come over here, thank you very much. Um, for all y'all, let's see, I go one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Defend against these guys. We have to defend against this coffee nation, too. Because, well, they're a puppet of Nueva Atlan, so. Very good, very good. Nice. Obviously, we're going to need more divisions, but whatever. Uh, put you under here. Eh, for now, put you under here as well. We need probably a field marshal, which we'll put under Colonte, which I should have done earlier before the war even started. But whatever. Very nice. We got a couple guard divisions here. Do that. Now we need 18 of these guys. Kind of sucks, but whatever. Oh, wait. Did that... There you go. There you go. Oh, do that. Do that. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. We've already been successful. We took out one nation already. Puppet them. We've expanded the factories, and now we're going to adopt new ideas. The founders of La Tierra, Tierra de los Tzotzil, left the Itza thanks to his ideological decisions or divisions with our high priest. Since then, much has changed and our society has become much more amiable, amiable to a new ideas. By embracing the reformist ideas being espoused in Tzotzil, we may be able to reform society for the better. What a radical. And eventually I will do Peninsula Roads, but we have a little bit of time. Uh, can't do this yet because we still need more guns. It's always like we need more guns. Hmm. Oh, are you guys... Movement on the border reports from the front tail of Warring Tail. Enemy troops are being relocated to the border. This is too far close to our borders to just be routine training exercises. Our treacherous neighbors must be preparing us for an attack. To arms, an attack must be imminent. Yes, they probably are. Nice amount of naval XP. Good. 0.221 a day. Doesn't really hurt our energy cell capacity or usage at all, so... Not too bad. Alright, well, I mean, come on, guys. Tensions on the border. Well, I mean, I have four divisions. Five divisions here, technically. Not too worried about that. Oh, oh I must be deploying. I must be creating new divisions. Alright, very nice. Good. Actually, that's really good. Go ahead and stockpile. Uh, maybe I should have not have take, done that. I should have probably started another army group, because there's other waterways down here. So, hmm. Just need a lot of tons of guns. Just give me guns. This is a, this. I will. I speak like an American. You know, just give me as many guns as possible. Oh, border war. Thank you very much. Uh, looks like the Washington brother did well. Unfortunately for you guys, I'm going to have to take this apart again. Kind of sucks, but whatever. Ah, someone falls ill. But is this good? Naval X army XP? Yeah, it is. I love adapting to new ideas. Well, some people do. Some people don't. I'm in between. Support the southern front. I, I need my guns right now, so let's do Peninsula Roads. Yes. That'd be good. When it comes to coastal travel, boats are all the best call. However, naval travel is dangerous and unpredictable. To counter this, we should expand on roads connecting coastal settlements, allowing coastal communities to safely travel and trade. Oh, they're actually trying to attack us pretty well, and we are attacking with a crowbar? Um, that doesn't look like a pipe gun. It looks like they're using rifles. Where are the, um, pipe guns? I was hoping there would be pipe guns, but that's okay. This gives us more and more army XP, as well as XP for our Spec Ops divisions, which are becoming more and more powerful. Nice, another division. Go ahead, create another army under here. 
And for now, do that. We're not going to have a lot of armies defending the waterways just for now, just because... Yeah. But whatever. Oh. You're not the one who has a drug problem. Okay, that's good. Oh, forging. Very nice. And now, I know that our land doctrine will get a lot of buffs or bonuses to research land doctrine in the future, so I'm going to kind of ignore that for now. Uh, that's not bad for research speed. Industry. Mm, I want that factory output cap and growth. I really want that. It's only 69 days, and then I will research some dynamite. Oh, I gotta love some coffee. Come on, guys. Yuinta, Yuinta, declare war on the dead horses. Faulty declare war on pale folk. What's going on here? Oh, we got a couple days until the day of Ka'an. Ka'an. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, the brother's very, very small. But they have, of course, ways to get bigger and bigger. And it looks like victory on the border. With the merry moods and heart and hearts, our brave Itzen warriors return from the conquest of blank. Semicolon. Though this conquest was not without loss, it brought with a great gain in the everlasting struggle with our eternal rivals, more army XP and daily, and a little bit more political power. That is great. You guys go right there. I'm going to cap it probably at two each. So that'll be good. Um, if I had to use something up and up, bureaucrat. Um, that's not bad. A little bit less stability, but we get more non-core manpower. Faster construction speed, which is really good for us. Just for World Goes Times, we definitely want that in the end as well. Um, army... I don't want to get more daily elite support just yet. Special forces, I might do that. Industry stuff. Oh, they did a lot of stuff for planes. That's good. Actually, before I move on, I can't do a scavenging program yet. We're almost there, we're almost there. So we can do one more of these first. Peninsula factories, another civilian workshop, arms workshop. Placing new factories in our heartland is a great boon. They will be able to produce munitions for our armies even if the war shall come and we must lose most of our empire, though that day will never come. Uh, for now, you go ahead and give me this. We'll lose a little bit of stability, but we have over 50%, so that doesn't really matter. But we get more construction speed and efficiency growth and a little bit more non-core manpower, so that's really nice, actually. Look at that manpower, but of course, always remember, we're losing 10 a day, or 10 a week. Hmm. Tasty coffee. NCR declared war on Baja, Mexico. Don't really have to look over there because we already know what's going to happen. For now, I'm going to add you over here. Because I'm going to need some coverage. Alright, NCR, let's see how you're doing. You're winning the war already. A little bit. Not bad, not bad. Pretty good for you guys. Pretty darn good. Now, for my ships, I doubt I can really up... Okay, I can maybe upgrade them with that. There's nothing else here. I mean, it's going to take a, quite a while to you know, research everything. Oh, do that. Cutter hull. Go ahead and go to Cancun. That's fine. Whatever. Trierame. Where's that? There, it's over here. It just costs a little bit more manpower. That's actually fine with me. Ooh, more mounted guns. Just give me more and more mounted guns. That's a lot of light attack. Mm, and we get slightly more anti-air. It won't really matter. Point defense. Um, I already like what I chose. Oh, you actually have armor on. Nice. Heavy wooden hide. Seagulls. No rams. Nothing. Oh, that's fine. Go ahead and do the next Trierame. I might as well do this now, so because why not? There's not really much else going on here. Oh, don't go to Carmen Kush, go to Cancun Kash. Cancun Ka. Alright, so we're almost out of the deficit of guns. We make up almost almost eleven guns a day. That's good. That's good stuff. Canoe hole. Um get some more ores on those bad boys. Get some point defense. Or would light deck weapons be better? Yeah. Yeah, that'd probably be better. Seagulls and then seagulls. Double that on up on that. Nice. The day of Ka'an. It seems just a blink of an eye since the last day of Ka'an, but another year has passed, and so the time to reap what we have sown is here once again. Up and down the empire, peasants are toiling in the fields to bring in the year's crops before it spoils, and our administrators expect we will get our cut of the crop before the week is out so that we can feed our armies and cities. And our harvest output has been updated and will affect our nation until next year's harvest. Next year, next year's day of Ka'an looks abundant. Oh, great. I love uh, Ka'an when it works out for us. Or at least when we don't starve. Starving is not fun. But not starving is so much better. Peninsula factories. 
Good. Uh, we'll do the support the southern front because I want to get down here. But actually, I want expedition too far. Raiding parties. I need to do this. Uh, mm, I want that arms factory as fast as possible. Right now, we have we have it plenty enough. So actually, let's begin a scavenging program. And instead, right now, I will do map the Gulf so we can do this as fast as possible to get down to one expedition too far. So, we're going to map the Gulf. It's a rule of the waves of the Mexican stretch of the Gulf of Mexico, as well as in a sinkable, sizable chunk of the Caribbean. By navigating and mapping the remainder of the Gulf, we should be able to expand our naval power across the entire region. Sounds like a good idea. A lot of manpower. We got quite a few guns, which is great. We're going to work on more on Trier Maze and stuff like that. How is our Navy doing? We have four ships. Not bad. Um, For all y'all. Um, ooh. Six days? Sure. You? Twi ah, 29 days isn't bad. Go ahead and just do that. You might as well. For this, come on the way down here. Do that for now. There you go. Well, oh, actually, do that. Got focus puppet, it looks like. Um, where is that? Oh, there's them. There's the pale folk. Cool. Naval XP is going still up a little bit. Not bad. Pretty good. Nueva Atzlan will definitely be our major enemy in this campaign. But we'll see what happens. I can see the lost. Good. I like that. M minus 2% recruitable population. Good. Treaty of Oaxaca. Banner of the Feathered Serpent. Lifebringer. Occupied Mexico City. But they did lose other stuff. Ooh, woodworking, very nice. To a procurement. Let me go ahead and grab some of that dynamite, which is still a little bit ahead of the time, but it's only 109 days ahead. And then for engineering stuff, I prefer industry stuff. I'm not going to do this since we're going to go with civilized, so let's go ahead and do some better output. I think that would be phenomenal. And I want to do this one last focus first. Because we got still got 71 days to wait. And there we go. And obviously, um, these things are bypassing because these have nothing. There's literally nothing here until the next update or something. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. So, we're going to wait to do the raiding parties. We have 60 days. So, what I'm going to do is do support the southern front and then integrate it military economy so we get more factories in the end. And there's nothing to read there. But that's pretty much all the time for that we have today, guys. With that in mind, before we go... I want to see... Let's go ahead and raise this by at least one more infantry battalion. That would be good. And... Oh, whoops. You guys do the exact same thing. Because we got a little bit more guns. Now we're out of guns once again. But that'll be good. Make sure we have at least 10 combat with. But that's all the time for we have today, guys. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new for the chickens. And uh, check out my Discord link below. Tell me hello on Discord. And I will see you tomorrow as we might end up in a war with Nueva Atzlan. If anything, we will end up in some sort of border crisis with them. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.